You're listening to Three Days Through the Wood, a novel by Bear Mawasaki, as read by the author. Chapter 15 The Heart of Winter Pill was in a bright, warm place. Water was running nearby, and mist, no steam, rose to cloud his vision. Somewhere through the haze he could make out a shadow looking back at him, face shrouded and frozen in shock. He reached out for them, and when he did, his fingers were stained. In his other hand was a short, sharp blade, dripping red. Somewhere, a fire was burning. Pill woke groggily in a pile of heaped furs. A mass loomed over him, its shadow casting tall across cold stone and wooden walls. He realized after a moment that he was laying flat on a table, and when he tried to move it was like breaking through a sheet of ice, his limbs and fingers trapped beneath the weight of the cold. Pill tried to lift himself, to crawl away somewhere and make sense of his surroundings, but the thing by the fire noticed him. A mouthful of yellowed teeth descended, barely visible through tangled wires of fur. Pill, lad, what in the name of goodness were you doing out there? Old Grizzly looked panicked as he heaped yet another fur over top of him. His hands were almost hot to the touch, and that warmth washed over Pill like the summer sun itself, making him aware of the violent chill consuming the rest of his body. Where's Chirp? Was he with you? I didn't see him out there. Tell me what happened and I'll head right back out. The ice in his body was trying to entomb him, but Pill cracked through enough to speak. Chirp's okay, he croaked. Taking in more than a breath was like trying to rip his way from a straitjacket. With his mom. Other side. Okay, said Grizzly, the tension melting from his shoulders like the snow off his cloak as he sat back down by the fire. All right then, lad. Let's get you closer to the hearth. He lifted the table as easily as if it were a log and dropped it nearly as close to the fire. We need to fight that chill off you. I was worried that... Well, I, I thought you weren't gonna... I'm okay, said Pill. The room was growing hazy. Thank you. They basked in the warmth of the fire for a long while afterward. When he woke again, Pill saw that Grizzly was sat in his heavy chair, chest rising and falling softly by the fire as he kept vigil over Pill. Aside from his gentle snoring and the crackling of the crumbling logs, Pill could hear as well the sounds of dimmed weather prying at the walls, winds whistling as they tried to slither their way inside the cabin. Beyond the glass windows was a world buried in snow, whose grays and whites were all fading to black as the last light of the day slipped over the western forest. Weakly, Pill tried again to lift himself from the table. His hands were stiff and clumsy, but his legs at least had strength to sit him up. A horn of mead was mulling near the fire, one of a pair, and he managed to bring it to his lips with an awkward sandwich gesture between his inflexible fingers. The warm honey brew filled his stomach, helping to melt the pit of ice nestling in his heart. He drank of it so quickly and so deeply that he started to choke. Here, lad, let me help you with that, said Grizzly, rousing from his chair. He reached out and steadied the horn while Pill recovered, then helped him drink the last of it. After that, he took the second from beside the fire and helped him with that one as well. They're both yours, he insisted when Pill tried to decline. I got thirds and fourths and however many more you need ready to go, so don't fret about how much you drink. I'm just glad you're awake. How? Pill finally managed to ask. His words were slow. While the mead had warmed his tongue enough for it to move again, the sweet honey drink was also gluing his teeth shut. How did you find me? How did you even know where to look? I had a bad feeling, said Grizzly, looking to the window. Mama always told me to listen to those, said they knew the truth of things sooner than we do. He smiled. She was good on wisdom that way. Always listened to what her dreams had to say, too. Anyway, it wasn't like I needed to go very far to find you. You were just down the way, you know. Another minute and you probably would have stumbled on in here yourself. Pill nodded, nursing at the second horn. At least he hadn't been turned around in the storm. I can't stay long, he said, working movement back into his fingers as he gripped the warm horn. I have to get back out there. What? Grizzly thundered, and the cabin walls shook. He laid a heavy paw at Pill's shoulder. I don't think you understand what you just said. There's a storm outside, do you hear that? You were almost lost out there. 
If I hadn't found you when I did... His voice cracked and he looked to the floor. I'm sorry, said Pill. I didn't mean to worry you. Don't you be sorry about that, Grizzly scoffed. I've been worried about the both of you ever since you left. Two young cubs roaming the woods all by themselves, no mamas to look after them. You're sure right I've been worried, and not a lick of that is your fault, so don't go apologizing none. If I was better, I'd have been marching you through those woods myself instead of hiding here waiting for winter to hit. That's not your fault, said Pill. The warmth of the mead and the fire was slowly taking hold of him. Or your responsibility. It's not on you to look after us. Well, maybe not exactly, but I... It just isn't, Pill said simply. We all have to learn to walk on our own eventually. Sometimes it's just sooner than we mean to. He downed the last of the second horn. But thank you for finding me when you did. I'd like to rest a little more if that's okay, but then I really need to get going. That cold must have rattled your head. Grizzly huffed, scratching at his heart. If you think I'm going to let you wander right back out there again after what just happened, you got another thing coming. Just what were you trying to do out there anyway? I was trying to go home, said Pill. Grizzly looked at him sternly, but stopped scratching quite so fiercely. Turns out, I was running away the whole time. The old man sighed, rubbing his hands along his cheeks. Well, you can't make it like this, he said, more thinking aloud than arguing with him now. I still have to try, said Pill. His feet were numb, either from the cold or perhaps from walking so much, but they gripped the floor sure enough. Do you? Grizzly asked. Now, with winter come? Nobody should be out there and all that, you know. Nobody could make it. There's not a chance of you finding your way through the storm with the rogue gone, you know. I almost got turned around myself and I barely left the grounds. If I don't go now, I'll never make it back, said Pill. He rubbed at his wrist. That window is closing and it's going to be gone real soon. I have to fix things before I lose my chance forever. Grizzly stewed in place, shifting uncomfortably as he tried to find his words. When he finally did speak, his tone softened significantly. He even managed to smile. So, you got the kid back to his mama, huh? Yeah, said Pill. He's with her now, somewhere far away from here. Grizzly nodded. I was saving something for him, you know. He reached deep inside his mountain of furs and pulled out a bottle of mead from a pocket. One of my best. I thought he might like to try it since he loved the other stuff so much, but I guess he won't be coming back this way again, will he? No, said Pill, as much as it hurt to admit. I don't think I will be either. Not for a long while, anyway. Grizzly turned his eye to the window. Winter always comes, he said eventually. That doesn't mean you ought to race into it. You can still ride out the snows here with me, you know. It sounded to Pill less like he was making an offer and more that he was making a plea. I told you before, you're more than welcome. I've got supplies fit to see us through to spring, and I never say no to the company. Pill looked around at the halls of earth and wood and stone, built for scores of wayward travelers, but home only to the lonely old man. What about your family? he asked. Moved on, said Grizzly. Long while back now. I'm the youngest and the last. He sighed. They won't be back this way again. Pill nodded. Have you ever thought of going on after them? Grizzly didn't answer the question or even look at Pill for a long while, but the way he carried himself told Pill that this was something he had considered time and time again, and the answer still eluded him. Instead, when he looked back to Pill, it was with a smile. When I was younger, I think. If I had your sort of chance? Well, I guess I wouldn't want to squander it, neither. He looked again to the ghost of the road. Sounds like you've got somewhere you need to be. Sounds like you do, too, said Pill. Once you're ready. You know, Grizzly said loudly, looking away from the window. When you first came through this way, I figured out right quick what you really were. You were like me. Looking for town, you said, but... What you were really looking for was some place to be, a place you belonged. I drifted through this forest a long time before settling in here, you know, and I've met plenty of people in all that time since, but they always seemed to know which way they were going. 
like there was a calling that only they could hear. Even when that boy knew what he was looking for, he just needed you to help him find it. But you were different. It was writ all over you that you weren't like the rest. You were lost. A lonely soul with no place to be. Pill stayed quiet, nodding only slightly in confirmation at everything the old man was saying. But now, said Grizzly, taking a knee to meet Pill by the eye and smiling with pride, that look is gone. It's in your eyes now, that same look as all the others. You finally know which way you're headed. Might be a boneheaded idea to face the storm again, but I've seen that look in too many sets of eyes to think I got a chance of stopping you. If you're really meaning to head back out there, well, best we get you ready. It took a moment for Pill to realize what Grizzly was saying. By the time he could think to speak, the old man was already up, looking hastily through his supplies. You don't have to do anything else for me he said. I've taken enough from you already. You took nothing, Grizzly barked. What I gave, I gave freely, and this den has enough for ten winters, let alone the one. I wouldn't be offering if I didn't mean it. His voice and footsteps both shook the room as he went about bundling furs and tying them together into a makeshift cloak. If it's weighing on you that heavy, then know that this is just as much for my sake as it is for yours. He wiped a heavy paw over his eyes, and when he pulled it away, he was smiling sadly. I'm going to worry about you out there either way, you know, so I'd rather know you left here as prepared as you could possibly be. Besides, I'd rather it be me here worrying than your mama out there wondering. You're going to get back to your family, Pill. He draped the new-made cloak around Pill's shoulders, tying it closed tightly. It was all warm from the fire and thick. All right, said Pill. Thank you, Grizzly. You're sure you're ready for this now? I don't have far left to go. The old man thought for a while, pacing about the room while looking for anything else he might give to aid Pill in his journey. He took out a heavy walking stick, weighed it in his hands, and then put it aside. He measured bundles of breads and berries and meats before putting them all back again as well. Nah, he muttered, not far left to go. Finally, he lumbered over to the doorway, wringing his empty hands. All right, then. You know what's better for you than anyone, and that means me included. I reckon you got what you need, so I won't get in your way no more. Pill felt the chill radiating from the door as he followed after Grizzly. He could feel the time that the fire had bought him as well, even if he knew it wouldn't last very long. You were never in my way. You were a welcome stop along the path, he said. The ice chill of the door handle nearly froze him to the bone but then Grizzly's burning paw was over his, turning it with him. I'd like to stop here again someday. You know you're always welcome, kid, said Grizzly. He pulled open the door, and the wind shrieked into the cabin. Snow buffeted the fire, trying to snuff it out, but the hearth held strong. Hopefully that won't be for a while yet. Now go! Bundle up tight and keep that face covered. Get yourself home! He had to yell, because the wail of the storm threatened to drown out everything else. The fire fought back against the chill, and Pill pushed himself out into the winter before it died completely. The storm screamed at him, warning him to turn around, telling him the way was closed, but he pushed forward regardless. There was only one more stop he needed to make, one place left he needed to go. The road was gone, vanished beneath the snow now piling to his waist, but the warmth of the firs were a bulwark against the cold, and Pill made his own path through it. Not far left to go, he thought. He followed the gap in the canopy, watching where the trees parted into a small river of sky, and followed the light of the moon as it started to rise through the dark clouds. The wind was so sharp that Pill worried it might split his cheek like a knife or freeze his eyes into place. It stung at him in a thousand tiny icicles, and he pulled the fur so tightly closed that he could only see through a pinprick hole of hair. Even still, he could feel his eyes slowing over. His blinking was becoming staggered, with longer and longer gaps of darkness growing in the time between his dwindling sight. The world was slowly leaving him. The forest became a different beast in the dark. Snow had stripped it clean, leaving trees once wreathed in red and orange and golden leaves standing bare, writhing in the wind beyond the bounds of the ghost road. It turned the deep wood into a macabre mimic of itself, a convocation of wooden figures dancing to tuneless winds. 
Pill understood that he was walking back towards something terrible. His conscience was bloodied, his hands were stained. He had done something awful, and the truth of it was waiting for him ahead. At one point, the sky briefly fell closer before rising away again. Pill recognized the bridge where he and Chirp had fallen into the river, although there was no sign of it now beneath the snows save for the slight lump in the landscape. He wondered how the fish in its depths were doing, and pondered for a time just how deep the river truly ran. As he walked, he couldn't help but wonder if maybe running hadn't been the worst thing for him to do. It was time to return now, he knew, but the world had been good to him the past few days. From the time Chirp had found him sleeping in the brush to the time Pill had sent him home over the river, he had seen a great many things that lifted his heart. He thought of their first morning with Grizzly, helping with the morning bake. He thought of the wanderers Rover and Cooper and Luna, wondering if they had managed to find their way home. He thought, too, of the entomologist, who had learned to see the beauty of the moment rather than try to capture an idealized past. He thought warmer thoughts. He thought of resting with the harvestmen as he led them gently down the oldest night road. He thought of Barb and Jaeger and how even her harsh eye was a loving one to the grandson still shying from the world. He thought of the entertainers in Mama Marie's inn who had helped him open himself for maybe the very first time even when he didn't know where his own story was going. And he thought of the stag, the storm cloud, and the scarecrow. He thought again of the willow, and hoped that she had found whoever it was she was looking for. The memory kept him warm against the snow. When he wasn't lost too deep in his own world, Pill thought, the world outside could be a beautiful place. And when that world turned ugly, when it tried to beat him down and break him into nothing, those thoughts and memories would be a safe retreat. A place to rest and regroup, to rekindle the fire in his heart before facing the day again. His past was before him. He didn't recognize the hot springs immediately. Most were buried beneath the snow, their waters having run cold, but one still refused to freeze over. Weak, solitary bubbles struggled to break along the surface, keeping the water just above freezing. He didn't dare dip a hand in, lest the water turn to ice at his touch. Didn't think you'd be back, said a weary voice. The straw hat girl sat at the edge of the pool, her feet trailing through the water. Her back was turned to him, but he saw the glint of an eye beneath the straw as she tilted her head his way. The harsh winds finally quieted as the storm broke around them. Pill looked to the skies finally shining brightly through the clouds. They were in the eye of the storm, and overhead the moon was shining, bright and full, and it brought a small oasis of light and life to the quiet springs. Forget something on your way? the straw hat girl asked. I did, said Pill. He stepped to the pool. I forgot about you. The straw hat girl scoffed and turned her head away, but she didn't leave. Long, thin legs paddled lazily at the surface as if she might drown otherwise. Pill let the furs slip from his shoulder and sat down beside her. The rocks were frozen to the touch, and the surface was almost stilled, but there was still a little warmth left in the water. He slid himself in, boots and pants and all. Why did you come back? she asked, still not looking at him. You were supposed to leave. I realized I wasn't ready to go. Too late, the straw hat girl said sadly. She had slipped in beside him, and Pill tried to get a better look at her in the moonlight. She was becoming more and more familiar to him. I realized something else out there, he said, his voice soft and almost lost in the wood. A lot of somethings, actually. I didn't understand it all until I sat here just now, but I probably should have known it all along. I think I was running from it this whole time, but... I'm here now. I'm ready to apologize. It's too late for apologies. It's never too late for apologies, said Pill. If you have even a little time left to you, any time at all, really, then you still have time to try and make things right. The straw hat girl sighed. Her shoulders were slumped in that too familiar way, and she slid further into the pool. There's no fixing this. Pill didn't hesitate to slip down beside her. The water's warmth was fading, but it wasn't cold either, 
and he sank with her into that formless, feelingless place. We can still try. When he took her hand in his, she didn't fight him. She didn't even look at him when his hands moved down her fingers and onto her wrist where the blood ran wet and freely. She didn't look at him even as he held her wound tight, trying to hold the last of her together. Into the murky depths of those dark red waters they sank, falling deep into memory further than Pill ever thought he would go. The light of the moon fell and faded into the water beside them as they finally met their faces, and Pill saw himself in full.